together uh, before we go eat, all right? In Ephesians chapter 5, the scriptures read this way. And he said uh, in verse 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Did you know the Lord wants you to know his will? He doesn't want you to be unwise and searching. He wants you to be found. He wants you to know what the will of the Lord is. And then he tells you something about the Lord's will. Look at verse 18, chapter 5, verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, what is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Did you know it's the will of God for every Christian to be filled with the Spirit? This is not just for singers. Uh, Brother um, Steve and I prayed this morning before the service and asked for the filling of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. It's not just for us. It's for every child of God. Every Christian is to be filled with the Spirit. And uh, did you know this word filled is an interesting word. Uh, it's used when you're filled with fear or filled with love. It's just uh, overflowing. But did you know uh, it's also used when they filled up a cup? They filled it to the full. And there was a, there was a, a teacher, and, and the teacher was holding up in a classroom, in a science class, held up a glass that was empty. And he said to the class, how, how many know what's in this glass? And some of them said, there's nothing in it. I mean, teachers know that, you know, you hold it up, there's nothing in it. No, he said, no, there's something in it. There's something in it. What is in it? And some of them said, well, you know, trying to be a little bit smart, said, maybe there's some atoms in there, maybe some nucleons, maybe some protons, neutrons. Oh, no, no, no. He said, no, no, just what's in this glass? And they said, well, it's full of air. Hey, you're right. Amen. He got it. It's filled with air. And he said, now, let me ask you this. How can you get rid of that air? And somebody said, well, you put it in a vacuum, and, and then you try to suck all the air. But is it possible to get all the air out of it in a vacuum? Not possible. But there is a way. There's a way to get all that air out of there. And so he explained it. He took a pitcher of water, and then he poured it in there until it came all the way to the top. And when it was running over, he said, now we got rid of the air. Because we filled it with something else. Now, in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're saved, the Holy Spirit lives in you. But he wants to fully control you. And to be filled with the Spirit, we've got to be empty of everything else. And did you know what that means? That means be emptied of self. You know, you know we've got to die to self. The Scripture said... Uh, in the words of the Apostle Paul, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And, and I want to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that there's no room for anything else. Self-will, self-pride, self-glory, self-realization, whatever that means. Guy said, I found myself. I said, but I never did lose myself. I'm here. <laughs> All of that kind of silly, that psycho Bible. You know, listen, the truth of the matter is we need to be empty of self to be filled with the Lord. And we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let me show you something that the Lord has for you. Look at the next verse. He said, speaking to yourselves in psalms, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Does that sound like a life worth living? I mean, this is a person who's walking around in happiness. I mean, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Man, that is a life worth living. And that's the opposite of living in misery and in sadness and depression and all of that stuff. I mean, a life where you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then what happens? You're speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, skipping through the house, just rejoicing in the Lord. That's a life worth living, and it comes when we die to ourself and are filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he says, giving thanks. And that takes a place of always griping and complaining. 
Oh, my life is so full of misery and I'm so unhappy. Well, give thanks. Why? Because you're filled with the Spirit. And when you give thanks, then there's something wonderful happens to your life. You're walking with the Lord. How marvelous, how marvelous it is to be filled with the Spirit. Now, look at what else is the result of that. On this sweetheart banquet night, look what he said. Submitting yourselves to one to another in the fear of God, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ also is the head of the church, and he's the Savior of the body. Wherefore, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, wives, he's teaching you the way to happiness. You know, he really is. Submit yourself unto your husband. Nowhere does it say, husband, I'm the head of this house. You've got to do what I say around here. I'm the boss around here. That's not in the scriptures. Nowhere in there does it say that. No husband has the right to get up and say, well, I'm the boss around here. <laughs> you do what I say or else, you know. That's not in there. It speaks to the wife. Did you get it? The spirit-filled wife submits herself to the husband. And she, being filled with the Spirit, says, you know what? I know you're going to give an answer to God for the house, so you're the boss. What do you want? And that cooperation just absolutely brings joy and peace because now you're doing the will of God. Now look at what else he says. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Do you get it? Husbands, you to love your wife just like Jesus loves his church. The greatest love story ever told is right here. I was thinking about this and asking the Lord, Lord, what should we talk about on this sweetheart banquet night? What should we talk about? Well, the greatest love story ever told is the story that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And that son of God brings to us eternal life and in our homes, we have this picture of Christ as the heavenly bridegroom, the church, the bride of Christ. And we have that opportunity to reflect that in our homes. How do we do it? Husbands love your wives. Now, the word love is a very important word. It's more than sentimental. In fact, it, it is a word that's a verb here. In other words, it's an action word. You get it? Husbands, love your wives. It, it's not that infatuation that we, we've talked about so many times. You know, you've, you've heard it said, you know, they had a puppy love and it led to a dog's life. That, that, that's not what he's talking about. That's not it. What he's talking about is a kind of life that really is worth living. And it's husbands and wives loving each other and actively pursuing it. It's a verb. In other words, as we've mentioned before, love is, I want the very best for you. I care about you. I want to minister to you. I'm willing to give my life to you. I want to please you. I want to pleasure you. I want to satisfy you. I want to make your life worth living. That's what it's all about. And it works both ways. Husbands to the wives and wives to the husbands. And this is a life that is really worth living. All right, so now we have the sweetheart banquet, and that we want to live that kind of life, being filled with the Spirit, loving one another, showing love one to another. Jesus said it, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love one to another.